Okay, everyone. Uh, this is a second portion of the, uh, the polymer dispersity. Now I'm going to talk about particularly what is called the average from uh, average molecular weight, and then what we call the dispersity, which is as a measure of how broad the molecular weight dis distributions are. It is a term that we use in the polymer science. The symbol is D. D with a bar is being used, and in old-fashioned way, polydispersity index. Okay, so I'm going to explain it to you about this. I show you this curve uh, graph before in the previous lecture, and the polymer uh, molecular weight distribution can be shown as a curve by increasing the molecular weight. We can measure what are the relative weight fractions. And it has a certain kind of characteristic of looks like a peak and then it kind of comes down. And so from here, we can get some information about, okay, so this is all about molecular weight at different imers. So we call imer, right? For a particular imer, their molecular weight is mi. And the corresponding their number fraction is ni. And when you think about the number fraction, uh, the, actually there is something called the weight fraction. Can be shown as a CI, sometimes people call WI. And this, uh, uh, for example, the CI is nothing but, let's, let's say the weight of imer is NI, MI, right? So, for the one that has a essential molecular weight of mi, if you just multiply their numbers, and that's the whole um, essential weight fraction, weight contribution towards the total weight, and the total weight is essentially ni mi sigma. Okay, so this is to the to everything. So from here, it is a quantity can can be used and back and forth. And uh, here is the one that we are using experimentally. The wave fraction is the one is to characterize. So that's the one that people find out from here. So then, then how this uh, MN is being defined and MW is being defined. So MN is probably the most easiest concept, which is number of molecules, polymer chains. total weight, right? So if I have something like, okay, I, I measure the whole, whole polymer in my hands, that's a one gram, and total, uh, and then it is, uh, if, if it is uh, actually one, 1,000 gram, and if I, the total number of molecule polymer chain is 10 chains, and then, then that will be 1,000 gram per chain. And that will be, and this will be a very big numbers because if you're looking at the way and uh, uh, the mol molar mass is now is 1,000 gram per chain multiplied by Avogadro's number. So, but and the uh, so that will be a very big, large numbers. But what you can really take out from here is the MN is very simple-minded concept. Somehow, if you can count how many chains are there, how much it weighs, and that will be giving giving rise to the numbers. And then we can we can calculate this by co correcting. This is a, I guess a per mole basis. How many chains do you have? And so how many chains is Avogadro numbers, chain per mole, so then you can multiply those numbers and you can do that. So it, the, really the question is, yes, we can measure the weight, but how we can measure the number of chains, and that's not easy to measure when you have a polymer, so you have to use some analytical characterization tool to characterize a molecular weight distribution and so on. That will be the essentially big portion of uh, the, this semester's lecture. But let's say that that's a concept, and having that's a concept, and I'll, I'm going to draw the purple here, showing up, and that's the that's a concept. 
And so you, you see that the whole number of the chain, which is a sigma of ni, and then, then ni mi is uh, the number average molecular weight. Uh, and then we, we know that uh, weight average molecular weight can be essentially, this is a, uh, this, um, ci mi uh, divided by ci. So what that means is the way to look at this problem is sigma ci, sigma uh, ci multiplied by mi. But now I'm here to highlight this portion here. Because the, the total summation of uh, weight is just a number, so this will be essentially what we call the weight fraction. And if you multiply by this one by mi, you naturally get weight average molecular weight. And so it's important to, and then there's, so this, this kind of the information can be explained further by looking at, okay, CI is NIMI, so I can easily kind of expand that into the mathematic expression. So now you start to see the paying attention to this. This is more like power to the one, this is a power to the two, and then we can think about to the power of three and the two. So this is a, another definition called Z average molecular weight. And Z is coming from the, the centrifuge. Uh, the, the word from the centrifuge contained in German is a Z, so they put this word. And the centrifugal method actually will allow to measure the MZ base uh, average molecular weight. And then this one is actually uh, can be defined uh, the average molecular weight in defined in the following way. The one thing that you need to know uh, is MN is the smallest, MW, and MZ is so the, the, the sequences. And then uh, it's much common for people to define what is called the dispersity. Also in old term, polydispersity index, PDI is a ratio between weight average molecular weight, number average molecular weight. And this number is always bigger than one, okay? And uh, depending on how the small, these numbers are close to the one, and we call that this polymer has a narrow molecular weight distribution or the, the broad molecular weight distribution. So this dispersity is a measure of broadness of molecular weight distribution. Okay, so, so here I have given you the three examples of the MN and MW and NZ, and then you will also see something that define in there are other types of uh, average molecular weight. It is called the viscosity average molecular weight. Sometimes the people can go on, carry on, mz plus 1. It's just a mathematical, when you have this information about number uh, and uh, their um, molecular weight versus the, the weight fraction or number fraction distribution, so you can see that, okay, I just uh, need to define this one as ni, mi, now this time to the 3, and I M I to the four. So you can you can think about people can continue to weighing this higher portions and so on. So this is an N I M I to the fourth. This is an N I M I to the fifth. And this M the M V is actually measured from intrinsic viscosity experiment, okay? Intrinsic viscosity experiment, intrinsic viscosity using the symbol, and you will, I will cover that later in the, my lectures, and intrinsic viscosity can be measured in the solution, and this is a Mach-Hawink equation 
showing the molecular weight versus intrinsic viscosity relationship. And there's a, a parameter called A, and A has a value of uh, typically, uh, let's see, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, okay? So these are the ranges of the values that you can have. And so therefore, this MV is somewhere in between, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you already. So I would anticipate now is MN, MW, but there is a MV, viscosity average molecular weight goes, and then MZ there, and then MZ plus 1, mz plus 2, and so on. Okay, so there are many types of different average molecular weight. Likewise, these are the different types of average molecular weight, but what makes uh, important is dispersity in molecular weight is weight average molecular weight divided by number average molecular weight. And you will get to see how these ty different types of average molecular weight can be measured. Uh, in the later, I will show you that Osmotic pressure measurement can be used to measure the number average molecular weight. Light scattering experiment can be used to measure the, the weight average molecular weight, and so on. So I cut these pictures from the uh, website or in, in a research paper, recent research papers. As you can see that the number average molecular weight this is a viscosity average molecular weight, weight average molecular weight, MZ, and they even calculate MZ1. And this is a paper from actually biomacromolecule side, and they actually have a big emphasis on higher moments of the different molecular weight characterization. And then as you can see that there is a, this one is an MV. And finally, I will show you this. This is a, sometimes a people call this when you can measure the weight fraction versus MI, and this one is sort of the what is called a peak molecular weight, right? So it's in a way, it, it is not math, it's a mathematically not defined in the same way than other molecular weight. This peak molecular weight, is, you can think about is DWI versus DMI at M. I equal MP. So it is a where the things are going the maximum, you call, call the MP. So, so when you see that, there are different ways to average them, and this is one. So let me actually show the actual equation that it looks like, and this is an average, uh, viscosity average molecular weight. The A values, like I said before, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. And so if you plug that in, and it cannot be higher than uh, these two values. This, this value is always, uh, oh, okay. So if you look at this A values, right? So when, this is almost like when A value is one, right? And then this is, uh, when A value is 0.5, and you will see this uh, value as, for example, that when A is 0.5, you will see MV var is sigma ni mi and then sigma ni mi 1.5 and then you have to do 2 okay so then, then that's that's this value and this value is always a smaller than the mw but bigger than mn Okay, so that's what goes in between these two values. And I need to give a final comment on the, what this called the uh, dispersity. I already mentioned to you that dispersity is this. Polydispersity index is an old term. We still, many uh, old fashioned paper using this term PDI. And both are essentially the saying the same thing. This is the same both uh, ratio between MW over MN as a measure of this. And this is actually a paper published in 2009 by uh, IUPAC nomenclature. And this person is discussed about 
uh, the dispersed in polymer science, and they like the f they pointed out the fact that poly dispersity index can be shortened as a poly dispersity, but even the poly dispersity is redundant. So they want to retain just see as a dispersity and using the symbol, but they cannot use a symbol D because this is used for the diffusivity. So they can they come up with this symbol or D with a dagger. And so now if you look at many polymer science paper these days, they use this symbol or just simply say MW over MN. Okay, thank you.